first battery ever created was by Sir Alexander Volta in the 1800s. Here we have a picture of him. To make the battery he created what is known as the voltaic pile. As we see the top and the bottom consist of two different metals, silver and zinc. The top is negative and the bottom is positive and here on the bottom right we have an individual element in the 1800s before the invention of the electric generator the Daniel cell was extremely popular and common for telegraphs for operating telegraphs and doorbells the Daniel cell also has Two other names, Crowfoot and Wetzel. They are not actually Crowfoot and Wetzel, but here is the actual picture of a Daniel cell. Well, enough with the history. Now let's go back to the real question: How do batteries actually work? Let us first go over parts of a battery. There is a positive terminal on the top of the battery, there is a negative terminal on the bottom of the battery. On the outer side there is a protective casing, towards the center in the middle there is electrolyte paste, ammonium chloride and zinc chloride usually. Then there is zinc, then there is a separator that separates zinc and ammonia, the electrolyte paste. Then there is a pitch seal, there is air space. And then there's a carbon and manganese dioxide mixture in this particular battery and then there's a carbon rod in the center. These are all the materials in a regular AA, AAA and a C cell, CD cell batteries but for the sake of complexity to make it much easier we are gonna use uh, more of the electrolysis diagram images in this particular presentation. There are several types of batteries. Some of them include AA, AA batteries, AAA batteries, and C or D cell batteries. If you look carefully at any battery, you will notice that it has two terminals. One is positive and the other one is obviously negative. battery is essentially full of chemicals that produce electrons which we know all are negative subatomic particles in an atom. Chemical reactions that produce these electrons are called electrochemical reactions or redox reactions. The electrons travel from the negative terminal to the positive terminal when the battery is being discharged. negative terminal is, is called the anode while the positive terminal is called the cathode. At the anode, electrons are lost and the cathode, the electrons are gained. So electrons travel from the anode to the cathode. Inside the battery itself, a chemical reaction produces the electrons. The speed of electron production by this chemical reaction controls how many electrons can flow between the terminals. Electrons flow from the battery into a wire and must travel from the negative to the positive terminal for the chemical reaction to take place. That is why a battery can set itself 
on a shelf for a year and still have a plenty of power. When a battery is recharged, the reverse process takes place. The main thing is the electrons this time go from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. And after all the electrons are transferred, the battery is ready to be reused.